Welcome to the wonderful world of wine, the tipple of choice for the sophisticated, the cultured, and the thirsty. Just get on with it, old man. James, stop being a buffoon. You're not a wine-tasting philistine anymore. In fact, you're showing all the signs of becoming a rain ponce. Is it bananary or is it peachy or is it strawberries? For which I hold you solely responsible. Right, back to business. America has been our home for about a month. We've been traveling through the New World Wine Empire, California, in this modest camper van. Your shorts are too we short. We should have run them over. We'll get those out of the gene pool. The aim is to turn me from a wine idiot... I think it's an affront to backers to spit the wine out. So stop cheating. ...to someone who can spit with polite font society. Stop spitting, stop, stop it, stop it! We're going to find out why the cool parts of California are perfect for some beautiful bubbly. Hey. He gets a sword. He gets hammered. Shut off and leave me alone. <laughs> and we get told off. Two English guys of your age behaving like teenage kids is ridiculous. In Autumn awesome James's James. big wine adventure, The New World. The Golden Gate Bridge, hit by sunlight for once instead of fog, with a blue sky behind it, is just wonderful. We leave the streets of San Francisco behind us as we travel northwards to a fairly recent but very good vineyard area called Carneros on the shores of San Pablo Bay. It has warmish, dry summers and wettish, cool winters, but above all, it's got the fog keeping the vines cool, all of which is perfectly suited for the production of that old world favorite champagne, or as they call it out here, sparkling wine. Although James is on the fast track to wine ponstum. Uh, this has got a slight hint of Palmer Violet in it. Oh, he's about to face his biggest challenge yet. Which is? Learning to appreciate bubbles. Brilliant. Oz, have you forgotten everything? I hate bubbles. Our next base could not be more soigné. Calistoga is in the world-famous Napa Valley. Oz, it all looks a bit posh. It is. Only the mega-rich can afford to survive here. In Napa Valley, even trailer parks will be deluxe. Luxurious swimming pools, bubbling jacuzzis, health clubs, decadent saunas. <sighs> Bad luck. This looks pretty rudimentary. No campfires, grey water is not allowed to drain on the ground. It's miles from the pub, James. It's disgusting. Where's James? James, we can't stay here. Where are you? Art? Yeah? I thought we'd toss for it. Toss for what? Emptying the tanks. Emptying the turds down the hole. Tails. Tails? Yes. <laughs> God, I feel relieved. You honestly were going to trust me with doing this. You're demented, James. And that is the daughter Hades. You ready? I pull this, and you will see that sort of flex and writhe like a python as your number two shoot down it into the great big cesspit. It'll be like a serpent. Ooh. 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 Look at it! Look at it! <laughs> It's like a vast serpentine log. It's got a life of its own. We are flushing the alien out into the pipes of Calistoga. It's leaking, James. It's not. It is leaking. Where? Look. That is very slightly leaking. Well, I've touched it. So, on to the first step of James's sparkling wine education. The local supermarket, armed with our wine can, in search of some fizz. Right, what does that bottle of wine say? It says Andre Champagne, California. Absolutely. Uh, and what does this bottle of wine say? Barodera Estate, 25th anniversary, fruit sparkling wine. So which of these is the more expensive? Well, I would guess, on experience, champagne would be more expensive than well, mere sparkling wine. Thank you very much, James. <laughs> but you're wrong. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> that is a wine fact. What is the wine fact, exactly? The wine fact is that, the, that although they're not supposed to call their sparkling wine champagne in America, the cheaper people still do, but the expensive people don't. So, this new world versus old world thing means that everything is back to front. Well, that's going to make life a lot easier. 
Napa Valley is not famous for sparkling wine production, but there are one or two wineries looking to give the old world champagne houses a shake-up. One such winery is Schramsberg, a family-run business born and bred in the U.S. of A. Jack and Jamie Davis built Schramsberg up from nothing, and now their youngest son, Hugh, is at the helm. I can't tell you how pleased I am to be here today because I've been wanting to come here for a very long time, from way, way back, long before my wine times when I was an actor. We were down in Hollywood, and it was Trevor Nunn's birthday. I said, have you got anything local and good? He said, you're lucky, he said. We are the first people in Los Angeles to have a new winery huh. called Schramsberg. Nobody had expected in any way how absolutely fantastic the wine can be. And I realised, and I wasn't a wine guy then, but in the distant sort of recesses of my mind, I thought that was the first great wine I'd ever had from California. And something told me there was a wine revolution starting on the west coast of America. All right, that's enough. Unlike normal wine, the sparkling variety undergoes a second fermentation in the bottle. Extra yeast and sugar are added. The yeast ferments the sugar, producing more alcohol and, crucially, carbon dioxide, which in a sealed bottle dissolves in the wine under pressure, producing bubbles. Although Schramsberg is kitted out with the latest in winery technology, one of the most crucial stages in making your bubbly is still done by hand. Riddling is the removal of the yeast, which was responsible for the all-important, bubble-producing second fermentation. To do this, the bottles placed at an angle are agitated every day to coax the sediment to the neck of the bottle for removal. And this is done by Ramon the Riddler. The process here is, it's the light touch, it's, it's the snap of the ritz, it's almost a little bit of a jerk of the bottle, and then you let it settle. Kick it, let it settle. Kick it, let it settle. I can do 40,000. That's my record. 40,000 in a day. Seven hours. Ready? Bottle turning. Can't be that difficult. Are you gentlemen ready? Yes. On the no. count of three. One, two, three. Oh, okay. Gosh, I'm very much. It's like uh, Ramon's roll out in front. He's done. What do you mean he's done? <laughs> oh, no, I <laughs> well, I may have lost to Ramon, but at least I beat Oz. I'd like to show you a unique way, if you will, of opening a, a bottle. Three. Wow, that's great. At what point do I admit that I'm not much of a champagne fan? I think when you've got the saber in your hand. I see that. Okay. Clear. I presume. Can I give it a whack? I can give it a whack. Ah. You need more practice. At last, having a Ready? toy yep. to play with means he's showing a bit of interest. Aye. There you <laughs> go. Nice <laughs> Nice yeah. Oh, that's uh, very satisfying. You can do it with that saber, you can do it with a knife, which you eat your lunch with. OK, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. Very good. <laughs> Was that with the blunt edge as well? That. Nearly everyone I know loves champagne. Everyone, that is, except for James May. But perhaps Hume's quality New World fizz there, will be able to turn him round. Sort of fresh baking bread. Good point. Yeah, nice, nice. Good. And that comes from the, the, the contact with the yeast yeah. in, in the bottle. So far, so good. I'm the only person in the world who gets miserable when I drink champagne. Uh, thank you, know. you for coming. No, no, Bye -bye. pleasure. Um, I think bubbles change the flavor. They introduce carbon dioxide and different. oxygen and all those things. I agree with that. You didn't say that. You said bubbles taste. Well, they do taste. Bubbles change the flavor, exactly, because that carbon dioxide makes it completely different the way the flavors are carried right. up to your nasal cavity. You must have been an impossible person to argue with at school. I'm so glad I wasn't either in a class with you or trying to teach you anything. What you're missing? Oh, another here. glass finished. No, but Why? Hi, Hugh. <laughs> let's give him some more fizz. The good thing about what James does in there is that he speaks his mind. The taste of f bubbles. That's what, what it is. What's your it's language? Sense. I think it's a good drink. Spoil. It's not the right one for you because you're talking about vanilla cream. Well, that was a day wasted. I don't like bubbly Oz. You drank enough of it. Well, I wanted to be sure I didn't like it. Fatted. I think it's clear from yesterday's antics that we need a break from the bubbles. It's about time I reined in my unruly student. Kick me out, then. 
There's a button here somewhere. If there's an ejection seat, you'd do it, wouldn't I you? I can do this. What's that then? Oh, Lord. No, it doesn't help. It's actually just made my life marginally easier. You've actually got a button to do that yourself. If you want. I know. I'm... I want to take James to the Newton Winery. <laughs> it's run by one of my old chums, Suhwa. Not me over. <laughs> Believe me, yeah. this is um, James. James. Oh, yeah. Hello, James. Nice Suwa. to meet you. Hello. Sue is a professor, a clinical psychologist. She won't stand for any of James's tomfoolery. And if anyone can teach James a lesson in manners, she can. Let's go look at a vineyard. He likes vineyards. Really? Shall we row him down the hill? Mm-hmm. This mountainside is a real challenge, but it has a cool climate, perfect for growing Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Puddy Birdo. Suha, you are a woman of your word. This is actually pretty cool up here. Now, how high are we up here above the valley floor? 1,400. And is the coolness surely something to do with the cold wind that blows off the Atlantic, uh, sorry, the Pacific Ocean, filling up the valley, the hot air further inland, having risen up and created a small vacuum that pulls it in, along with occasionally some fog, which helps to cool the grapes and slow the ripening process. He's not as silly as he looks. Oh, don't fall for it, Sue, oh, please. Now, let's see how he copes with a gadget designed to predict the alcohol content of the wine from the sugar content of the grapes. What? level of alcohol do you think those uh, grapes are at? They are Merlot grapes, so I think this is going to be say, more 13. And it is 13 and a half. Now let's try it out on the old dog. He had it upside down. <laughs> you still have it upside down. Like this? Yeah. Well, you didn't know like this. I mean, I'm bending over backwards to see this standing. Basically, I've got my eyelid in it. I think it's ridiculous. It's very easy. It's just that ours is ours. Despite the odd bit of technology, some of Suwa's methods are refreshingly old school. So if you really want to understand what kind of wine you're going to get out of these grapes, you squeeze it like this, see? You get rid of all the juice, and then you just have the skin, and you chew the skin. Try it. And this way, she knows what the wine will taste like and when to harvest the grapes. Is it Pinot Noir? Well... Taste it and you will know what it is. Don't guess. It's a slightly earthy kind of character. Syrah. No. Cold tea. Yes. You are very close because of the tanning. Taste of wood. How could it taste of wood? That does not make sense. And I begin to think you were intelligent. Mm, I think you've met your match, Mr May. Well, hang on, Oz. I haven't had a drink yet. What difference will that make? It'll make me witty and charming. Of course. Silly me. That's the section through a tree, yes? No. If you have a tangent cut plank, it's effectively cut that way. There's so no such the thing. I'm sorry. They all come in stars, four by four by metre. Cut from a tree? I don't think we are going to cover in this see, guy. You That's see, no you see, you see the, the, the trouble I have? As you're starting to use our wine holiday, no disrespect to you, but as an excuse to look up your old girlfriends from when you were in France 20 years ago. <laughs> Well, it's all James, but just trying to actually get... I mean, there's a reasonable chance to come and see... Both of you are like two miserable months. kids. Let's be serious for two minutes. I'm sorry I have to be the professor, because at a certain point, two English guys of your age behaving like teenage kids is ridiculous. The planks are cut lengthways. This way, not that way. Yes, but going that way, you can go like that. I'm not sure if this plan is working. He's getting idiotically belligerent. Any woodworker listening to that will know what I was on about. <laughs> Anyone else think you're a cretin? Now, for the ultimate test, can James behave himself during the tasting? There is a Chinese saying which is rather fun. Don't throw pearls at pigs, and I don't understand why I am giving you one of this glass. I can see why I give it to us. So us, we taste this, and I mean taste. This is a 17-year-old Chardonnay. This is the rarest white wine he's going to taste. I can see your Adam's apple going up and down. You're cheating. Not cheating, I'm drinking it. Stop cheating. See, he's cheating again. He swallowed it. It's not it. cheating. This is where I enjoy it. I see? can't give you an opinion see? unless I swallow Us. it. Okay. 
Here's some cashew nuts. And in fact, if you want to cleanse your palate, uncooked cashew nuts are good for it. That's good wine too. People really would think you were a bit of a wine ponce, though, if they came round to your house and you said, "Would you like a drink of wine? Would you like some cashew nuts first to what cleanse your palate?" What does it matter what people think of you? They think you're a wine ponce. That's quite serious. Really? Why? Because <laughs> being a wine ponce is unacceptable. <laughs> Complimentary. Yeah. Yeah. Love your book about. <laughs> Suha clearly thinks that Oz can be saved, so she whisks him away. He's been gone for 45 minutes. Now, I've no idea what he's up to, but um, I think it's a bit rich leaving me on my own with this selection of virtually unobtainable and priceless wines. Have you tasted this? Probably not. Are you yeah. proud of yourself? For what? I'm pissed. So what? You left me upset. She's not upset. To finish a whole bottle of the most expensive wine in the place. Look how many of the cashew nuts are. Oh, been. leave it out. We leave you there for 15 minutes, minutes and you, you get hammered. It's, I just wish sometimes I could take him to see some of my really nice friends and he could behave himself and be nice. <laughs> If Suwa can't tame him, nobody can. Maybe Schramsberg and Newton were a bit upmarket for James. So the next day I take James to see a more down-to-earth side of the wine world. Will this relight his fire? The wind in the hills, the fog rolling in off the sea, and the lower temperatures are all perfect conditions for sparkling wine production. And with an abundance of top wineries, Carneros does appear to have it all, but everything has to start somewhere. A few rugged, down-to-earth pioneers helped make Carneros the prime vineyard it is today. Every Friday, they get together to play bocce, which is basically the Italian version of boule, and my good friend Kent Rasmussen is a major player. Uh, and he is not a rich, poncy bloke with 500 acres on the, and a, and a sort of silly French chateau on the top of a mountain. Can't He's even a real trousers, person. He does have some slightly funny trousers. He's got funnier ones, I can actually promise you. <laughs> uh, but Kent grows the bloke. oldest Pinot Noir vines in the region. So you're a real man of the soil. You're not a champagne farmer. So to speak. Mm, I like to think myself that hey, way, yeah. Are you ever tempted to sell up because you must be sitting on a fortune? Mm, no, I don't think so. No. Well, good for you. So. I enjoy what I do. It's a, it's a good lifestyle. Pinot Noir is used to sparkling wine, but Kent prefers to make red wine from it. Uh, and I know wine? James prefers red wine to fizz, what so. Give James that. Ah, what is okay. that? That is it. So this is a straight Pinot Noir. This is a straight Pinot Noir. Oh. Good, eh, sir? It is. It's got a slight... James. ...graveliness to it. I don't know whether this is something that you're just trying to impress Kent or me with. I've been trying for weeks to make you spit wine out. I need a break. We, we drink wine two or three times a day. I spend half my time lying on the deck, not even knowing which country I'm in, and it's not healthy, and it's, it's not the right message, either. That I'm almost slightly appalled that you should be spitting out my friend Kent's wine. I can't get used to this, James. Stop spitting. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Actually, viewers, I haven't turned into a wine pond. I'm actually doing this for Oz. Would you mind awfully if I left you to it for a bit? Sorry, Kent, but my guts are being... Are you are serious? Yeah. I just think I need to go and spend some time indoors. It's going up well. Mm. I give up. But with James out of the picture and the bubbly education That's pretty much <laughs> down the pan, I can relax. And you know what? I'm going to have some fun. Bring a bottle with you, though. I don't want to be dry when I get there. Okay. Bring that stuff. OK, where are we? It's wimpy. I felt it. What are you? Hey. You see, Oz has never quite got over his disappointment at being in the camper van when what he was really hoping for was a Mustang. So I've hired him one. <laughs> yes. Much better. This one's for you, James. You wimp. 
too hard. Too hard. Oh. Oh. So we have another guest with us for the rest of this wine trail, the Stang. But I'm not sure Oz will actually be in the mood for it today. Unfortunately, the renowned wine critic and arbiter of public taste, TV's Oz Clark, got quite badly clattered last night, which gives me an opportunity to present him with another challenge. It's a hangover cure tasting session. It smells disgusting. Oh, I'm sorry, that was an awful noise, wasn't it? You could sod off and leave me alone. Our first tasting is our old favourite fried Spam and onion with baked beans. Unfortunately, it is made with American oh, Spam, which is sweet. Well, the only reason this would help my hangover is so damn hot, it's actually burning holes in my tongue. I'll give it 11 out of 100. Oz. I'm doing my exercises. I can see it at your dressing game, do you mind? Right, number two is leftover dried pasta with cheesy sauce with added pepper and mustard. I'm going to give this one 74 points out of 100. Finally, tinned sardines in olive oil mashed up with black pepper and a spoonful of salad cream served on crisped American rye toast and lightly finished off under the grill. Oily fish, good for you, brain food. First impressions, the effect it's having on your oh, thick head. Hot of them. I'm going to give this one 46 points uh, out of 100. So, the conclusion to that, leftover <sighs> pasta and cheese sauce with mustard powder is the best hangover cure. There you go. That is a wine-drinking fact. Best hangover cure. Poppycock. Tomato juice. What's the sauce? Tabasco. Nice cold vodka. Egg yolk in there. The hair of the dog. Down in one. I tell you, that is a hangover cure. Come on then. No, Oz. You'll like it. I think you'll find this is. Two more steps. OK. Turn left. Left, you fool. And open. It's a Mustang. Fantastic. This is a great treat. I'm delighted. I thought you'd like it. You did say when we first met up, oh, have you brought a Mustang? And I hadn't, and I felt a bit guilty, so I went and got one. Not for me. Isn't it ironic? With the bubbles out of the equation, we get on just fine. Indeed. But I'm afraid it's time we brought the bubbles back. In the 1970s, Claude Tatanger, the French champagne mogul, staked his claim for Californian gold with Domaine Carneros. The boss here is Eileen Crane. We don't try to compare ourselves to French champagne. Imitations are never as good as originals. So what we are trying to do is make a Carneros original. This wine powerhouse saw the fizz potential in Carneros before anybody else. The climate in the Carneros is actually, during the growing season, a little bit cooler than Burgundy and a little warmer than Champagne. It's kind of like a vintage year in Champagne. It's her single-minded vision, an obsession with Pinot Noir and Chardonnay grapes, that has made Domaine Carneros a tourist hotspot and a place to chill out in Carneros. So you are an, an absolute avowed bubble person. Well, I think it's just hard to be sad when you're drinking champagne, don't you think? I, I don't really drink. like bubbly wine. I'm, <sighs> I know what you're going to say. You'll say, ah, well, you will when you taste this. But I, you know, I struggle with bubbles. I'm sorry. In order for James to appreciate bubbles, I think we need to go back to basics. We're about to try the juice of the grapes that have just been brought in from the vineyards. This is the start of it all. This grape juice will become sparkling wine. This is brand new Chardonnay juice. What is it? Bramley apple juice. Mmm. Well, I like Chardonnay juice. Well, next we've got <laughs> Chardonnay juice that has just finished the first fermentation process, so it's eight day old wine. It is the 07 vintage. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing about Ooh. the wine you make sparkling mm. wine out of rather than wine you make table wine out of. It's got to be more acid, so you pick the grapes when they're less ripe. Right. Wine. So you get less sugar that way you as well. You get less sugar, but you also get more acidity. If you allowed the grapes to get fully ripe, the alcohol in that wine would be too high to undergo a secondary fermentation in the bottle. Oh. And yet, 
we need to imagine what this wine will taste like six, seven, or eight years down the road. Okay, here's a wine challenge of sorts. This this new Chardonnay is, we would, I think we would agree, the sharpest thing in the world. If I can drink a whole glass of that without pulling a face, will you buy me a bottle of Madame's Pinot Noir? Another of James's idiot challenges. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You wimp. Let's move you on to the real stuff. The wimp. <laughs> okay, I failed. But how will the wine maestro fare? Okay, you're yeah. out to laugh, but you can't pull a bulldog chewing a nettle face. You're on the verge. Of it. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> If it's any consolation, it's as a white man, uh, I take two or three sips uh, and spit, so... Now it's time we tickled our taste buds with a drop or two of the good stuff. But will it be enough to turn James round? So, here we have the 2001 Lareb. This is all Chardonnay. Have you had someone going down there with a little, little knife and making a tiny little thing in the bottom of your glass? They all come scratched. Because that means that the bubbles have got somewhere to start. That's why you get this lovely twirling pattern. That's a bubbly wine fact. Is it bananary or is it peachy or is it strawberries? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting nuts and cream off it. Champagne is rather elegant and lean. In California, for some reason, it's often the other way around. Chardonnay is the one that gives you round, plump flavours, and the Pinot Noir is leaner. I quite like this. Hallelujah! There's hope for him yet. The other sparkling wine that you get in that other country across the channel is often quite sort of dry and bready almost in well, texture but this is genuinely fruity we're probably far enough into the series now to give another very salient wine fact which is that expensive wine tastes better than cheap wine <laughs> doesn't it it's not a myth you'd better be careful james when, when you you're in danger of becoming my next poncy wine friend sort of Fresh baking bread. Good type. point. Yeah, nice. I like the Chardonnay very much as well for its slightly raw and feral quality. What I'm actually doing, Oz, is exploiting your good reputation to get a free drink. Haven't you worked it out? Teenage kids is ridiculous. In Autumn James's big wine adventure, The New World. The Golden Gate Bridge, hit by sunlight for once instead of fog, with a blue sky behind it, is just wonderful. We leave the streets of San Francisco behind us as we travel northwards to a fairly recent but very good vineyard area called Carneros on the shores of San Pablo Bay. It has warmish, dry summers and wettish, cool winters, but above all, it's got the fog keeping the vines cool, all of which is perfectly suited for the production of that old world favorite champagne, or as they call it out here, sparkling wine. Although James is on the fast track to wine ponstum. Uh, this has got a slight hint of Palmer Violet in it. Oh. He's about to face his biggest challenge yet. Which is? Learning to appreciate bubbles. Brilliant, Oz, have you forgotten everything? I hate bubbles. Our next base could not be more soigné. Calistoga is in the world-famous Napa Valley. Oz, it all looks a bit posh. It is. Only the mega-rich can afford to survive here. In Napa Valley, even try make life a lot easier. Napa Valley is not famous for sparkling wine production, but there are one or two wineries looking to give the old world champagne houses a shake-up. One such winery is Schramsberg, a family-run business born and bred in the US of A. Jack and Jamie Davis built Schramsberg up from nothing, and now their youngest son, Hugh, is at the helm. I can't tell you how pleased I am to be here today because I've been wanting to come here for a very long time, from way, way back. 
long before my wine times when I was an actor. We were down in Hollywood and it was Trevor Nunn's birthday. I said, have you got anything local and good? He said, you're lucky, he said. We are the first people in Los Angeles to have a new winery huh. called Tramsburg. Nobody had expected in any way how absolutely fantastic the wine could be. And I realized, and I wasn't a wine guy then, but in the distant sort of recesses of my mind, I thought that was the first great wine I'd ever had from California. And something told me there was a wine revolution starting on the west coast of America. All right, that's enough. Other parks will be deluxe. Luxurious swimming pools, bubbling jacuzzis, health clubs, decadent saunas. <sighs> Bad luck. This looks pretty rudimentary. No campfires, grey water is not allowed to drain on the ground. It's miles from the pub, James. It's disgusting. Where's James? James! We can't stay here. Where are you? Art? Yeah? I thought we'd toss for it. Toss for what? Emptying the tanks. Emptying the turds down the hole. Tails. Tails? Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God, I feel relieved. You honestly were going to trust me with doing this? You're demented, James. And that is the daughter Hades. You ready? I pull this, and you will see that sort of flex and writhe like a python as your number two shoot down it into the great. Welcome to the wonderful world of wine, the tipple of choice for the sophisticated, the cultured, and the thirsty. Just get on with it, old man. James, stop being a buffoon. You're not a wine-tasting philistine anymore. In fact, you're showing all the signs of becoming a rain ponce. Is it bananary or is it peachy or is it strawberries? For which I hold you solely responsible. Right, back to business. America has been our home for about a month. We've been travelling through the New World Wine Empire, California, in this modest camper van. Your shorts are too we short. We should have run them over. You can get those out of the gene pool. The aim is to turn me from a wine idiot... I think it's an affront to backers to spit the wine out. So stop cheating. ...to someone who can spit with polite, prompt society. Stop spitting, stop, stop it, stop it! We're going to find out why the cool parts of California are perfect for some beautiful bubbly. Hey. He gets a sword. He gets hammered. Shut off and leave me alone. <laughs> And we get told off. Two English guys of your age behaving like big cesspit. It'll be like a serpent. Ooh. Ugh. Ugh. Look at it, look at it. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a vast serpentine log. It's got a life of its own. We are flushing the alien out into the pipes of Calistoga. It's leaking, James. It's not. It is leaking. Where? Look. That is very slightly leaking. Oh, I've touched it. So, on to the first step of James's sparkling wine education. The local supermarket, armed with our wine can, in search of some fizz. Right, what does that bottle of wine say? It says Andre Champagne, California. Absolutely. Uh, and what does this bottle of wine say? Barodera Estate, 25th anniversary, fruit sparkling wine. So which of these is the more expensive? Well, I would guess, on experience, champagne would be more expensive than mere sparkling wine. Thank you very much, James. <laughs> but you're wrong. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> that is a wine fact. What is the wine fact, exactly? The wine fact is that, the, that although they're not supposed to call their sparkling wine champagne in America, the cheaper people still do, but the expensive people don't. So, this new world versus old world thing means that everything is back to front. Well, that's going to...